we're ready to go. Okay. Don't overdress with this thing. Oops. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> I'm calling to order the Monday, November 10th, 2014 meeting of the Planning Commission of the City of Dana Point, and I would like to ask our city architect, John Tilton, to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, liberty and justice for all. Do we have a full contingent of Commissioners, please let <clears throat> please let the record reflect that all commissioners are present, with the exception of Vice Chair uh, April O'Connor, who has an excused absence. Okay. So we move on to um, approval of minutes, uh, item number one, which is minutes of the regular Planning Commission meeting on October twenty seventh, uh, two, two, 2014. And do we have any additions, corrections, or abstentions? I'll make a motion to approve. I'll second. Approved. All those in favor? Please say aye. Aye. Motion passes. We move on to public comments. Anyone wishing to address the Planning Commission during the public comment section or on an agenda item is asked to complete a request to speak form, which is available at the door from the Planning Secretary. Denise, would you raise your hand and let everyone see, see you? Thank you. Okay. Um, the, the completed form is to be submitted to the Planning Commission Secretary prior to an individual being heard by the Planning Commission. Um, any person wishing to address the Planning Commission on a subject other than those scheduled on the agenda is requested to do so at this time. In order to conduct a timely meeting, there will be a three-minute time limit per person and an overall time limit of 15 minutes for the public comment portion of the agenda. State law prohibits the Planning Commission from taking any action on a specific item unless it appears on the posted agenda. Do we have any speaker slips? There are no public comments. We have no public comments. Move on to the consent calendar. There are no items on the consent calendar. We move on to uh, public hearings. Item number two, Coastal Development Permit. CDP 14-00023 to allow the addition. Chair Claus, were we going to uh, move item number four? Um, Are we going to four first? Yes, there's, if we could, if. Okay. We are moving to item number four. Thank you. <laughs> That's much easier, yes. Item number four, which is Coastal Development Permit CDP 14-0020 to allow the construction of a new two-story, 3,467-square-foot single-family dwelling with an attached 651-square-foot two-vehicle garage on vacant land located at 24642 Santa Clara Avenue. Do we have a staff report? Yes, and Assistant Planner Danny Giamatti will give the staff report, please. Thank you, Ursula and Chairwoman Claus and fellow commissioners. Tonight's item is the request to approve Coastal Development Permit CDP 14-0020 uh, for the construction of a new two-story residential uh, single-family dwelling with an attached garage. Uh, this lot's located within the appeals jurisdiction of the California Coastal Commission. So the subject site is a 10,125 square foot vacant lot which fronts Santa Clara Avenue to the north and the alleyway to the south. The lot's rectangular in shape and uh, is bordered by similar single family development to the north across Santa Clara Avenue to the east and across the alley to the south. There is some multi multiple family residential units on the uh, western side across Violet Lantern. Unlike the majority of the city, which is regulated via our zoning code, the subject site falls within the Dana Point specific plan and is therefore designated as the Coastal Residential Medium Density District. That's CRMD. Additionally, the site is located within the coastal zone as well as the appeals jurisdiction of the California Coastal Commission. 
Uh, here are some site photos of the existing lot. Uh, as you can see, this is the front yard view from Santa Clara. Uh, there's some uh, existing wrought iron fencing there. Uh, this is the property to its east, which is uh, similarly a, a, a Tuscan-style villa, um, which is already built, obviously. Uh, and then this is the view from the center of the lot facing the alley. And then the backyard from the alley, uh, there's an existing it, deteriorating wood fence on site. Um, so, as I said, it's currently fenced off along Santa Clara and, uh, and the alleyway. So this is the site plan um, showing the proposed construction. Um, so the, there's, again, it's a two-story single-family home. It's comprised of 3,467 square feet of living area, and there's an attached 651 square foot two-vehicle garage. The floor plan includes four bedrooms as well as several accessory rooms. And the architectural styling is uh, of a Tuscan villa, incorporating a mixture of stucco walls, decorative wood, and iron elements, and uh, clay tile roofing. There's various freestanding walls proposed throughout the site, and they will be surfaced with materials that match the building. And the home would comply with all standards of the coastal residential medium density zoning, and no, v no deviations from the uh, Dana Point specific plan are requested. Um, the overall design will complement the variety of stylings of other properties along Santa Clara Avenue. So this is the first floor plan of, uh, of the house. Uh, it's showing all proposed livable and non-livable uh, improvements on site. So the lower floor is composed of two bedrooms here and here. Uh, one will be utilized as an office. And there's also a grand room here and then a dining area followed by the kitchen and a garage and additional accessory rooms. Uh, there's some partial, uh, partially covered off-street parking um, that's going to be provided in the rear as additional um, spaces. Uh, they are maintaining their, uh, their minimum garage space requirement of 20 by 20. Um, this is a 651 square foot garage. Um, and they're also uh, they're, they're providing a, uh, they're creating a, a rain collecting meadow in the front uh, front yard area. And then there's some water features, gravel paths, and drought resistant plants going to be on site as well. So this is the uh, second floor plan. It's uh, comprised of two bedrooms side by side, and they open to uh, a deck. And then they, are, they also share a bay window here. And then there's an additional closet and bath, and this is accessed uh, through the stairway here. Um, it's also important to note that this second floor area will only fill roughly half of the building footprint. So this is the... Uh, Elevations, the front elevation along Santa Clara, as well as the rear elevation at the alley. Um, the, the line of the proposed grade uh, shown on the elevation facing Santa Clara, which is lower than the existing grade uh, here, is to create this rainwater collecting uh, meadow. And the overall building height uh, from the uh, existing grade will be uh, 26 feet. There will be some architectural projections of the chimney and then uh, the top of the cupola, cupola sorry, pronounce it here, up to 28 feet. And um, the south elevation here will only include a uh, six-foot-high uh, site walls, uh, gates, and then an ancillary entry courtyard uh, right here. And these are the... Uh, oops. What happened here? For a second. There we go. Sorry about that. Uh, here are the west and east uh, elevations of the dwelling. Uh, the west elevation, shown here, it will neighbor a presently vacant lot and therefore be exposed uh, for the time being. And then the east elevation, uh, as I said earlier, has a recently constructed home with similar architectural stylings seen here. Uh, so this home... Oops. What's happening? Jumping ahead here. There we go. Touch anything. So... Their home, the subject site, is on this side here. Okay, so... Oops, what's going on? Okay. So these are some of the existing uh, site improvements. I'm sorry, the proposed site improvements. Again, showing the meadow here. Um, another cool thing they're utilizing, which I don't think we've seen much around the city, is uh, upcycled railroad ties. And they're going to be utilizing those as the uh, driveway, as portions of the driveway, as well as uh, a walkway here, which they will get a separate encroachment permit for. Um, and then some areas here and here as well. Um, they're going to be doing some flagstone pavers um, throughout the site. The meadow with the water c collecting features 
feature is here and uh, there will be some additional water features on site and then the additional parking is here. There's also going to be a six foot high trellis here which I talked about a little bit earlier um, but that is uh, all within the development standards of the DPSP. So um, let's see here. Uh, as for the findings um, uh, for the DPSP, uh, they only require that you find two, and uh, we find that the project conforms to the development standards of not only the Dana Point specific plan, the Orange County Zoning Code, uh, and the local coastal program. And, uh, therefore, uh, we recommend the approval for CDP 14-0020. That's it. Any questions? Thank you. Uh, normally, I would go uh, to questions of of the commissioners, but I'm wondering would would uh, would it be more appropriate to have a, uh, the gentleman speak on this at this time so that he doesn't have to sit around and wait for? Us? Let's wait until we open the public hearing. Pardon me. Let's wait until we open the public hearing. Okay. So, questions. Anybody got any questions? I have a question. I don't interest more than anything else. I think the meadow features is intriguing is it yeah it's is a, it truly just a, a a grown over meadow is this something they envision actually having water in it when we get heavy rains um or is it going to be like a grown over kind of meadow maybe you know that may be a question to better address to our applicant yeah. um, i'm wondering i don't I'm know for sure some sort of sub collection below that is there if we're in extreme rain situations do, would it percolate into the groundwater or, you know... Right, how would it collect? Yeah, I, mean, or would I think it's be? a great, great concept. I'm uh -huh. just kind of interested in how... Yeah, I could certainly find that out for you and get back to you. Thanks. No problem. Okay. Anyone? Any other questions? No? We have no questions? Okay. Then I'm going to uh, open the public hearing. Go for it. First request is uh, Bob Thiel. Please state evening. your name and city of residence. Thank you. Good evening, planning commissioners and staff. My name is Bob Thiel. I'm a resident of Dana Point. I live across the alley from the vacant lot in the proposed project. And based upon Danny's presentation, we really think it's going to be a great addition to the Santa Clara neighborhood. Uh, another beautiful house for that nice stretch of uh, roadway. And I would ask the Planning Commission to approve the project. Thank you. Does anyone have any questions of Mr. Thiel? There's no other uh, request to speak unless the applicant would like to speak. If you have any questions, I'm happy to. It's pretty straightforward. To, I, don't, I don't have much to add after that. But we, except for there, the uh, um, collection basin is, is uh, going to be used for irrigation and pumped out as, you know. The best towards on groundwater, there. Right. Or it would be planted across the top of it. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I think it's a great idea. Okay. So that's it. All right. Um, we can move on to... Uh, well, we want to close the public hearing. Yeah. Well, all right. First, I'm going to close the public hearing, and then we move on to Commissioner Deliberation. Who wants to start? I'll start. Commissioner um, Whitaker. Thank you. Um, I think um, that um, you know, reviewing the um, staff report and the presentation um, and the plans, that this certainly is consistent um, with the uh, development standards for the area. I, um, I think it's a um, lovely, I agree, it's a lovely addition to Santa Clara Street and very sensitively designed. And um, I, uh, I think this is uh, going to be a lovely uh, home for um, a lovely building and home. So I will be supporting it. Mr. Denton. Yeah, I think uh, I think it's a beautiful project. It's going to add a lot to uh, the neighborhood, and I was particularly excited to see the drought tolerant and the water collection features uh, in this uh, area of drought we're having now. 
these types of uh, plantings to really make a big difference. So I commend the the owner on that uh, thought process, and uh, and that's uh, all the findings could be made, and there's uh, no variances on this project. So I'm in favor. Commissioner Newcook. I agree with my fellow commissioners. I think it's uh, great, sensible design, appropriate for the neighborhood. Um, you know, looking at the drawings, I'm thinking, okay, where have I seen this? And then I looked where the architect is in Santa Barbara, and it's like, okay, makes sense. Um, it's, I think it's a, a great, it will be a great addition. Um, I think that... Uh, uh, I think this is kind of an amazing project. It's almost whimsical. Uh, very much fix, fits into the tone of the neighborhood. Um, I think the architecture is great. Uh, I think it will be a uh, great addition to our neighborhood. Uh, Chairman, yes. Chairperson, can I uh, make a motion? Please. Okay, I'd like to propose a resolution of the Planning Commission of the City of Dana Point, California, approving Coastal Development Permit CDP 140020 for a new two-story, 3,467-square-foot single-family dwelling with an attached 550 excuse me, 651 square foot two-vehicle garage on vacant land located at 246642 Santa Clara Avenue. I'll second. We have a motion and a second. Uh, any further discussion? If not, all those in favor, please raise your hand. Aye. Aye. Okay. Motion passes. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Okay. We are now going to go back to item number two. Item number two, coastal development permit. Let me get my glasses for this. Is, no, let me let's wait a wait a minute here. Move on to uh, uh, where's my uh, coastal development permit CDP 14-000023 to allow the addition of 484 square feet in the form of a new attached casitas casita office pantry and expanded dwelling entry at 124 Monarch Beach Monarch. Monarch Bay Drive. And do we have a staff report? Yes, and just to clarify, this is item number two. Or it should be. Is it? Okay. Okay. Yes, <laughs> item two. It's wrong. Uh, and uh, Evan, is, this is your Evan. Evan Langdon, uh, Associate Planner, will give the staff report. Thank you. And hello, everybody. On your screens is the presentation for this item. As you mentioned, a coastal development permit to make some additions to an existing residential dwelling. The item is before you because the subject property is located in the coastal zone, uh, also known as the city's coastal overlay district, and because the scope of work proposes an increase of 10% or more to the dwelling's existing or present square footage. Uh, the property is located in Monarch Bay Homeowners Association. That's a more or less built out and certainly established community of exclusively single family dwellings. Our property, of course, contains a single family dwelling built in the late 1960s, comprising a single story and standing about 11 feet in height and uh, totaling 3,797 square feet, including a roughly 900 square foot two vehicle garage. Our scope of work, or the, the present request, would add new square footage in three places to the floor plan, circled in red, of course. The first here, that's an expansion, or rather I shouldn't say a new pantry, ultimately an expansion of the kitchen, a new entryway here, and then a new casita, or known as an attached accessory structure for our zoning code. To go through the floor plan, and then these three pieces in a bit more detail, the pantry, again, an extension or expansion of the dwelling's existing kitchen. 
the new entryway, it would replace the present entryway that you can see a bit faded there, but the, the former front door would be pushed out with a new front door along with some uh, new extensions to the, the facade of the building, new architectural projections. And then finally the casita, attached accessory structure. Uh, it would have a bedroom, bathroom, and of course attached, or again, attached to the building, but it would not have a connection to the rest of the floor plan. That said, it is not qualified as a second dwelling unit in that it does not contain a kitchen, kitchen facilities. And so again, it's qualified as an attached accessory structure like an office, gym, studio, that sort of thing. In addition to those floor plan details, um, landscaping, new hardscape are proposed, water, fi uh, I'm sorry, water features, uh, fire pits, again, new landscaping, hardscape throughout the property. Um, some of the more uh, interesting bits circle there in red. As I mentioned earlier, the building's a single story, standing about 11 feet in height, and that wouldn't change with these additions. That's well under, of course, the potential 26 feet the building could stand in two stories uh, for a structure with this roof pitch. Uh, the improvements would be surfaced to match the existing building with stucco color and trim. And uh, let's see, the, the building, of course, complies, or the improvements comply with the zoning code requirements for its residential single-family four zoning. Uh, there are no variances requested. The project has been reviewed by the Homeowners Association. We have correspondence as an attachment there to that end. Uh, there have been no letters of correspondence from the public to the item. So it was finding, or as all findings can be made for the project, uh, staff recommends for approval as proposed. If you have any questions, of course, happy to help. Uh, questions of the commissioners? Who wants to start? Do we have any questions? Um, thank you, Commissioner. Um, I noticed that the Monarch Bay Association letter was a little different than what we normally see. And the letter basically is saying that forms were not received from four adjacent property owners and that if they do get letters then then it won't then the plan has to change and they also say that the freestanding paved patio with furniture in the front yard is denied and so starting with my first question is um, maybe the more simpler one is the plans that we have show a uh, paved area with patio furniture. Is that the patio furniture they're talking about, or is there other patio furniture that uh, is not on our plan? There was, in, the, in an earlier iteration of the plan, paved patio furniture in the front yard, and that, as you pointed out, was removed via the HOA hearing, and so your plans should reflect that. It, does, it no longer shows any improvements in the front yard. Okay. Uh, as to the, the HOA approval, it, it's a detail, a nuance of their CCNRs. Um, the HOA board did review and did approve the project as proposed, but there's a final step in that approval process, which involves uh, sending a form to your neighbor and having them, as I understand it, acknowledge that approval. Um, so the, the project, as proposed, has been approved by the board, but its final, final approval is subject to getting this last form signed, this acknowledgement form signed by the neighbor. And if um, it, it seems as if, if they have a, let's say, a negative comment, they have to change their plan. That detail I don't know. I could ask the, or I'd ask the applicant to explain that in a bit more detail. Okay. Because if we approve it, um, I suppose, well, go ahead. I was going to say, technically, we don't enforce their CCNRs. We sort of, as a courtesy, like to see that the Homeowners Association has uh, approved the project. But uh, theoretically, we could go ahead and approve a project, even if it's been denied by the Homeowners Association, and it would be up to them to uh, deal with the property owner. Okay, that was the, what I was the clarification I wanted to make sure I had. Okay, thank you. Nothing. Nothing. Um, I have a couple of questions. Uh, this uh, casita, it, it has a, a bedroom and a bathroom and a pantry. I understand this is not, so it is, it is a habitable structure, right? Um, all right. And someone is going to be living in that. Are they, is it that person or persons, whatever it is, um, going to have access to the, the main structure? 
Well, again, the floor plan isn't connected, so they would have to exit the casita and enter the dwelling. It's not, so it is essentially its own freestanding thing. Its own accessory structure, yes. Its own accessory structure. Yes. Um, I'll tell you my concern with that is that um, structures like this, which are not to code um, and are used as living spaces, uh, it is... It is not infrequent to find fires in these structures because people are not maintaining them in whatever way they should be or using them for other purposes or, or whatever. Um, and a lot of people die in accessory structures that are kind of left on their own. That's my concern with this. Um, somebody is definitely going to be living there, but it's not... I'm not aware of what the you know, and the it's use well. Would be what it. I should say is, it's usually, usually uh, the problem is electrical. Well, I can say certainly that the project is going to have to be submitted and be approved for a building permit, and so it's going to have to comply with fire code standards. And before the city would, of course, approve the building permit with the initial plans, and then ultimately final the project. So it, it will, at least at first, be mandated to comply with all fire, all building mm -hmm. codes. What happens after the fact? I suppose that's a concern with any any structure. I, I will say accessory development like this is allowed per the zoning code. You can have a freestanding or attached office, bedroom, gym, anything of the sort. It's it's just the addition of that kitchen facility that mm -hmm. triggers a whole number of other design requirements. Mm -hmm. But in and of itself, attached or detached, it's it's a permitted use in our, in our zoning code. Yeah, I mean, I understand that, but they always end up being somebody living there. If I could, shouldn't be. If I could point out as well, we do have a condition of approval, number 13, ah. that says that it cannot be converted into a secondary dwelling unit okay. um, to sort of help resolve those issues. All right. Thank you. That, that answers my question. Um, along those same lines, um, there is not a kitchen, so presumably there would not be hookups built in the construction that would allow just an easy put-in of a stove or anything like that. Okay, thank you. Okay. Anything else? Uh, in that case, I am going to uh, open the public hearing. Are there any speaker slips? There are none. Or does the applicant want to speak? Yeah, I'll say a few things. Please. And state your name and city of residence. My name is Stan Andrade. I'm a resident of Dana Point. Uh, I'm the architect for the project. Just to clarify, the pantry that's in the proposal is part of the main house. Uh, this little independent um, uh, area, which is a bedroom, bathroom, uh, and a small closet, is just to be uh, actually, in this particular case, for the mother, an aging mother that's going to come live on site. Um, so there's no intention at this point for it to be a secondary unit. And, and with the... With the um, Condition number 13, I think that that covers that. Um, and I think, uh, unless you have any other questions, I think that clarifies that. With regards to the to the letters, um, it's really not a letter of approval. It's actually just an awareness. And it's something that uh, is required in Monarch Bay. Unfortunately, what happens is we don't get responses. People are either vacationing or just fail to respond. So the board has learned to go ahead and approve them with that condition that maybe someday they'll see these letters and, and ultimately a lot of times they don't. So, and But the plans would not be required to be changed. The board has approved the plans the way they are. Even if there was an objection, uh, it, it's not about objecting or approving. It's about aware, being aware that the project exists. That's really what that is. Mm -hmm. Unless you have any other questions, that's all I have. No. Thank you. Okay. Anything else from my fellow commissioners? Okay. Then I'm going to close the uh, public hearing and bring it to uh, Commissioner Deliberation. Who wants to start? Uh, pretty straightforward, complies, um, appropriate. I think it's uh, fine by me. Okay, it's fine by me. <laughs> yeah, I agree with my fellow commissioners. Looks like a good project. Um, it adds uh, some, I think, it really Valuable additions to the to the property, and I'm in support of it. Um, I think that um, 
with uh, the addition of Condition 13 um, concerning uh, not being a second dwelling unit, uh, that I think that um, we should. Uh, I, I'm, I'm supporting this project as, as presented. I have one question, uh, City Attorney. The, that that condition then will stay with the property if the owners of the property today sell it to somebody else who decides they want to throw a kitchen in there that they would be uh, prevented from legally doing so. That's correct. Okay, thank you. I'll make a motion if it's all right. Sure. Uh, motion approving a resolution of the... Planning Commission of the City of Dana Point, California, to approve coastal development permit CDP 14-0023 to allow the addition of 484 square feet in the form of a new attached casita, office, pantry, and expanded dwelling entryway at 124 Monarch Bay Drive. I'll second that. Okay. Uh, seeing none, um, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Okay. I has been approved. We move on to item number three. Which is Coastal Development Permit CDP 14-0013 and Minor Site Development Permit SDP 14-0023M for uh, additions of 524 square feet and landscape improvements, including a seven-foot-high uh, side yard block wall at uh, an existing two-story single-family dwelling located at 24622 Santa Clara Avenue. And do we have a staff report? Yes, and Danny's in the hot seat again. Thank you, Ursula, and uh, good evening again, uh, Chairwoman Claus and fellow commissioners. This is a, another property along Santa Clara Avenue, uh, two, two houses actually to the west of uh, the one that we just talked about. Um, so this request is a little bit different. It's, uh, it's a request to uh, exceed the 10% of the existing square footage on land that's located within the city's uh, uh, coastal zone and the California Coastal Commission appeals jurisdiction. Um, additionally, the applicant has also uh, requested a minor site development permit to construct a seven-foot-high side yard block wall along uh, Violet Lantern Avenue. So this is the uh, subject site here. It's a 8,700 roughly square foot lot with a previously developed uh, 2,434 square foot two-story single family residence. Uh, it also has an attached 1,596 square foot garage. The lot is uh, rectangular in shape and it's bordered by similar single family development uh, on all sides and then this uh, 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 multiple family residential to the uh, west. Um, Again, unlike the majority of the city, which is regulated via, via our zoning code, uh, this subject site falls within the Dana Point specific plan, and it's also designated as CRMD, which is, uh, again, the Coastal Residential Medium Density District. Um, additionally, as I said, the site is located within the Coastal Zone Appeals Jurisdiction. These are some site photos. Uh, so the top picture here on this north elevation, uh, it shows that uh, the existing home that faces Santa Clara, um, there's no exterior changes uh, proposed to the front of the home that require any discretionary action. Um, the middle picture here, uh, that mouse? it um, uh, clearly shows the existing uh, rear view of the dwelling uh, at the south elevation, and uh, it shows how access and parking is taken from along the alleyway. And then the bottom picture uh, shows the exterior side yard uh, elevation facing west, which fronts Violet Lantern. Uh, as you can see here, these two areas in yellow uh, are, gonna, are where the most significant changes are taking place. Um, this is where the wall is proposed. And then uh, there's an area up here where uh, it's currently roofed. It's an outdoor living area, and they're going to enclose that space as well. So this is the proposed site plan. Uh, the areas in green uh, shown here, shaded in green, are the areas uh, that are uh, the proposed addition which trigger uh, the uh, CDP. Uh, the, the 524 square foot addition to the existing 4,030 square foot dwelling uh, is an increase of 13% to the gross floor area. And as I stated earlier, additions of 10% or more to the uh, existing internal floor area within the coastal zone, uh, show the, the uh, appeals jurisdiction, shall require a CDP. 
Here's the first floor plan. Um, the areas shaded in green here constitute uh, the livable additions to gross, fl gross floor area, which trigger the CDP. And um, the areas shaded in yellow here are the non-livable additions. Uh, this is a 39, I'm sorry, this is a 480 square foot loggia on the exterior side uh, that f uh, faces uh, Violet Lantern, and then this 228 square foot porch um, as well. There is an area of the existing garage uh, which is being converted into livable area. Uh, the existing garage, uh, as you can see, is rather large, so they're going to uh, relieve a portion of that and make it livable space. That does not constitute a part of the uh, internal floor area which triggers the coastal development permit. So this is the second floor plan uh, showing the proposed change as well. Uh, this is the 214 foot square foot addition uh, which I had talked about earlier. Um, currently it's an uh, unenclosed outdoor living area with a roof. Um, they're proposing to enclose it to create a bath, an enlarged bath and closet area. Uh, here are the north and south elevations showing the changes. Um, again, this is the, the areas shaded in yellow are the non-livable um, portions that are being changed. Uh, this is the uh, the porch area here. Uh, this cover is being added, and then uh, there's an attached loggia that's being added here, as well as, I don't know, it's kind of hard to see, but there's a seven foot high side yard block wall, which is here. Um, this addition as well to the east of the yellow, uh, of of the property is the um, expanded uh, guest room. Uh, this will be roughly, I believe, 16 feet tall to the ridge, and um, and then on the uh, south elevation here, and this is just showing the rear of the uh, elevation, showing the uh, the attached loggia again, and the uh, the loggia I believe is 12 feet high. And these are the east and west elevations showing the proposed changes again. Uh, the uh, the visible changes from Violet Lantern looking west is the enclosure uh, that we talked about here, uh, and then the, uh, the loggia and wall, which can be seen from uh, the Violet Lantern. Uh, the Dana Point specific plan requires that walls with any side yard setback area be a maximum of six feet in height. Um, however, exceptions and modifications uh, to the fence and wall height provisions can be granted subject to the approval of a minor site development permit. Um, therefore, the applicant is also requesting uh, approval of a minor site development permit in order to construct this seven foot uh, uh, side yard uh, wall, which will be set back two feet from the property line and it will also be landscaped um, as shown with plants uh, for total screening. Um, the total improvements at the east elevation are, um, are very minimal. Um, as, I, as I said, you'll, you'll see there's a new guest room here and then the back side of the enclosure uh, or of, the, of the area which will be enclosed here. So uh, these are just some similar walls uh, along or, or near Santa, Santa Clara Avenue. Uh, the Dana Point, uh, let's see. Excuse me for a second. The top image at the corner of Old Golden Lantern and Santa Clara. This is a corner lot uh, as well as this one. Uh, as I said, these are close by, and both of these walls um, are, are, I believe, seven, over six feet in height. This one, I believe, is seven when I went out and measured it. There's also some landscape improvements, as I said, that are proposed. Um, these are showing the, the, the highlighted yellow areas showing all the areas to be um, planted for aesthetics and screening um, here and here. Uh, because the lot backs to the alley and has no rear yard, the applicant really is proposing to enclose this area to create a um, outdoor living area, um, make use of the side yard, the large side yard. Um, they're proposing a spa as well, um, some outdoor seating, a barbecue, and then a, uh, a small chiminea here um, with a. a Again, some uh, uh, flagstone or, or, or type of paving that um, that will be uh, decorative. So the height of the building itself is going to remain unchanged, obviously, uh, at 27 feet, and the max allowed in this area is 28. And then the, all the required setbacks are going to be maintained, uh, with 20 feet in the front, five feet on the sides, and then 15 feet in the rear. 
uh, all improvements are going to be maintained within the buildable footprint, as I said, and everything, uh, all the improvements conform to the DPSP, the uh, Orange County Zoning Code, and then the local coastal program as well. So, therefore, staff recommends the approval of SDP, uh, I'm sorry, the Coastal Development Permit, as well as SDP 14 0023. Uh, are there any questions? Who has questions? Commissioner Whitaker? I need to look at something first, and I might, okay. I might have a question. Commissioner Denton? No questions. Commissioner Newcourt? Danny, just a clear, <clears throat> clarification. Um, what are the normal side setbacks for walls? For uh, walls over six feet in height, or? Or you can be six feet within? Yeah, so you can technically go to six feet in height um, on an exterior side yard um, uh, to the property line. Uh, anything in excess of that uh, requires a minor site development permit. Uh, you also have to maintain at least, uh, or it has to be within your buildable footprint of the front yard setback. So um, let's say that in this case the front yard setback is 20 feet. Uh, the six foot wall, if, if it were proposed at six feet, um, would have to step down to 42 inches within the front yard setback. Um, in this case, it's an exterior wall, and the data point specific plan is very clear that you can do a wall up to six feet in height by right. If you want to go higher, um, it can be modifications can be allowed through this uh, minor site development permit. Okay. Thank you. No problem. Commissioner Whitaker. Now I have my question. Thank you. Um, what does the, um, I guess, I don't know, if what the trellis, what does that look like the, over the front door? I, I don't see any, um, there's no elevation of it. The porch? Or yeah, the porch. What is that? What's it made out of? And uh, how high is it? And uh, what does it look like? So the, I don't know if you can see up on the uh, north and south elevations. On the north elevation, it's uh, maybe I can zoom it in a little bit. Let's see. So the, the trellis here will be roughly 12 feet in height, and it will be set back well beyond the buildable footprint. Um, as I said, it's outside of the development standard. I mean, I'm out, outside of the um, front yard setback. Um, Technically, anything uh, within I inside of the buildable footprint um, can uh, uh, can go to the height limit of that district. Um, so they're well within the confines of that at 12 feet. Okay, so this trellis, if you look at um, sheet P101, which I, I don't know what number it is. It's in the middle of the set anyway. So um, it's called planting pallet, I guess. It's the, it's the planting uh, plant. Okay, so it appears to me that the trellis is, is, uh, goes from the building line of uh, where like the living room fireplace that line and then goes back to their entry it doesn't go out to the setback of the sidewalk right correct it stays with inside that entry courtyard okay and so the sidewalk going um or their paved area landscaped area going to the sidewalk that's there's nothing over that correct there's no overhang there okay all right, that was my clarification. Thank you. No problem. Okay. Any other questions? Okay. I'm going to open the public hearing. Do we have any anyone who wishes to speak? Uh, we have one coming up, and perhaps the applicant. Hello again. I'm Stan Andrade. I live in Dana Point. And I uh, was remiss in thanking staff for the great work they did on the last project and likewise this project. Thanks again, guys. Okay. Um, yeah, this project uh, actually is a project I worked on many, many years ago for uh, my client's parents, and um, it was a pleasure to, to meet them and get a chance to, to help them with their, uh, they've taken over the property, and, and I think they had some great ideas. Um, I just wanted to point out that on that side yard wall, um, we had a couple options. Six foot would have worked right at the property line, uh, but it was, because of the way the grades are there, it would have been 
a little non-private. So the additional foot's going to really help with affording them and the adjoining pathway privacy to each other. Um, and so what we did is we, we moved the wall back a couple feet. So it was a win-win, I think. We got a little bit more height, but we provided a two-foot strip so we're not on the property line. We've taken a couple feet of our property to provide a, an area so we could plant because uh, that gave us a little room to put some planting and do something against the wall that might otherwise have been kind of harsh against the sidewalk. So um, we think it's a good solution to give them a little more height. It helps with the justification to the modification, and uh, I think it will help the, the overall street environment there. Um, otherwise, we're you know again, I'll answer any questions if you have any. I have a question. Um, what's a loggia? So a loggia is a, is a term much like an, a lanai. It's an Italian term for a covered outdoor entertaining area or, or do, seating do, area. Um, does water go through that roof? No, and that's a good point. Uh, likewise, the front entry uh, trellises has been called. That's a solid roof element. So it's a covered solid area that's outdoor, that doesn't have walls, basically. So it has a seven-foot wall around it, and it has a roof that rain can't go through. Yeah, they're separated. Um, the, the trellis doesn't go all the way to the wall. It start, stops short of it. Um, so, yeah, so the area that's basically an outdoor seating area that's covered for shade and rain protection. Uh, the wall, the, the, the wall is away from it, so uh, it allows for natural light to get through. Commissioner Newkirk? Yeah, I just have a quick question on the block wall. Um, you said you're going to have plants that will cover it eventually. Or are you planning on? Yeah, we're, uh, the planting plan calls for a variety of plants along the way. We're hoping to espalier basically along the wall and become somewhat of a living wall eventually. Some with, more with mature plants, hopefully, that won't grow. I think we can start with, you know, there's two feet, so it's hard to get too large of a box plant in there because of the two foot strip but I think we can get uh, the right type of plant material that in time can grow uh, and can kind of be an espaliered ten years, screen. Two years? Oh no, a couple of years. Yeah. Okay, thanks. Commissioner Whitaker? I, I have no more questions of the applicant but I do have another question of staff. Please. Okay. Anyone else? Okay, thank you guys. Mm -hmm. Um. So, no building is allowed within a 20-foot building setback. And why is, I, I, I assume this had, um, was like a trellis with rain, so it's like outdoor furniture, an outdoor area. Um, but with a, with a solid roof, why wouldn't this be considered a, uh, a building within the building setback? But the side yard setback is actually five feet, so it's outside of that foot, uh, 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 that setback on the exterior side. Are, are you referring to the, to the area by the porch or on, along the side yard? I'm talking about the side yard. Okay. Yeah, so that setback is five feet for the, uh, for the actual building. Um, that being said, we allow for specific non-livable structures to encroach into um, required yard setbacks, um, specific distances. Um, in this case, it is not projecting into that setback. However, that wall is placed within the setback. Uh, and as I uh, explained earlier to uh, uh, Commissioner Newkirk, uh, walls up to six feet in height are allowed by right within the setback. Uh, and then if you want to exceed the height, it requires this minor site development permit, which also has you um, requires that you step the wall back two feet. Um, but uh, just to answer that specific question, uh, the trellis or, or the covered loggia area itself is is not encroaching into that required side yard setback. It's five feet outside of it. Okay, so for clarification, um, there's the loggia area set back five feet from the property line. Correct. And. Uh, the wall, though, is not set back five feet. It's within the five-foot setback. That is correct. Okay, thanks. Commissioner Denton? I have no questions. Commissioner Luca? Yeah. Yeah. I think I have no 
No questions. So um, I will close the public hearing and bring it to the commission for deliberation. Who wants to start? Um, I like the improvement. I like the improvements to the uh, to the structure. <coughs> Excuse me. And uh, I can understand the need for the uh, extra foot on the wall, and I don't have a problem with it because it's set back with the two feet, and then probably vines and some sort of drought tolerant material can be used along there, so that it doesn't require sprinkling sprinklers or anything else out there. But the um, fact that it's on that side street, I think, gives the applicant some added uh, privacy for their uh, for their seating area and their barbecue. So um, I'm in, an, in favor of the project as it's proposed. Commissioner Newcook? I agree with uh, Commissioner Denton. Um, I'm sure my, my only thought, and I'm sure the applicant would prefer not to see a blank wall for a long time, so hopefully the plants are chosen to kind of make it an attractive wall because a block wall is a block wall. But other than that, I think it's a, a good improvement. Okay. Looking at me. Um, uh, let's see. Um, I know. I, 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 it, it obviously it meets the uh, requirements, and uh, I do understand the um, elevation gr uh, change that the um, building itself is a little higher than the sidewalk. Um, so I think that um, there's a little confusion in the plans that are presented, what the extent of that wall is. And um, I would, can I ask for a clarification? Because uh, I, I noticed there's a difference between the um, sheet P101 and then... Uh, Sheet G001. Um, one shows a, sh a smaller area and one shows a larger area. So it's the wall, um, the wall that is uh, being approved tonight. Does it extend all the way to um, into the garage area? So a little over half of the. Site area is that what we're P one o two? Okay. Yeah, I I uh, I think um, I think this is going to be fine. I'm going to support it. Okay. Um, I'm familiar with the uh, property since it's in my neighborhood, uh, and uh, quite frankly, even in its current condition, it it is. Uh, uh, I don't want to say a showstopper, but something that is is so so right for the neighborhood that it just uh, is always a delight to walk past, and seeing what uh, what you're going to be doing to it, particularly within that alleyway area, um, I think is going to improve it just uh, a couple million percent. Um, I'm very much in support of this. Chairperson, I'd like to make a motion. Please. Uh, we, uh, we approve a resolution of the Planning Commission of the City of Dana Point, California, approving coastal development permit CDP 140013 and minor site development permit STP 140023M for additions of 524 square feet and landscaping improvements, including a 7-foot high side yard block wall at an existing two-story single-family dwelling located at 24 622 Santa Clara Avenue. I'll second that. With a motion and a second. Any other further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Motion passes. Thank you very much. And from here we move to, is this, we got anything else going here? No. What do we got? Uh, oh, new business. Where are we going to? Oh, E on the agenda. Okay, sorry. Oh, okay. okay. No, this is a public hearing E. Uh, public hearing E, there is no... Pardon me? 
E, public meeting. Right. We we'll move to E, public meeting. There are no public meetings. We move to F, old business. There is no old business. We move to G, uh, new business. Item number five. Yes. There's, I don't think, anything anything in here. Staff wanted to talk to you about the November 24th regularly scheduled meeting of the Planning Commission. Um, and we were planning on coming in here this evening uh, with a, a discussion about canceling that meeting. However, we only wanted to do that if there was no need for business to be conducted. Uh, since then, we have learned of um, an item that does need to be brought before you. Um, however, on that particular day, there are a number of key staff who wouldn't be able to be here for that meeting and we wanted to suggest the idea of a special meeting one week prior which is November 15th I believe 17th thank you November 17th and wanted to query your availability for so that would be one week from today for a special meeting for November 17th and then with the proposal to cancel the November 24th meeting I'm, I'm okay with that. I think it's it's fine, and it'll probably be one one item that evening. Correct. Do you anticipate it'll be in City Hall? Yes. Okay. Very good. Yeah, one short item. Yes. <laughs> I didn't say that. <laughs> <laughs> I did. <laughs> I'm available for the uh, 17th special uh, to meeting. To the best of my knowledge, I'm available. Yeah, me as well. I just need to confirm my calendar at work. Okay. Okay, and um, we will send confirmation out um, by Wednesday whether, in fact, that meeting would occur um, based on the availability. Time for public hearing? It doesn't need to be noticed. Okay. Yes. Oh, okay. And we need to make sure we let um, April. Yes, I will reach out. I will, I will reach out to her. And I mean, I, it, the only note, it just needs to be posted on site The um, in terms of there's no newspaper noticing, et cetera. And okay. All right. uh, we just don't want people showing up on the 24th looking for excitement and we're not here. <laughs> right. And we will be sure to communicate that. <laughs> um, can I? What? All right. Okay. Very good. Um, Thank you. Okay. We move on to item number H, staff reports. Um, I have none this evening. I don't, John, no. Okay. Nothing. Nothing. We move to Commissioner Comments. Commissioner Whitaker. Um, well, I was just wondering um, if you knew of any projects coming up in December, January. So originally we were um, holding sort of the December 8th Planning Commission meeting, the regular meeting for South Shores Church, and we didn't want to schedule that with anything else because I think it'll be um, a a long, a long item. Uh, however, we received 116 comments from the EIR. A couple of them are, are binders. <laughs> so um, the staff and the consultant are going through those comments, and uh, it doesn't look likely that we'll make the 8th. There is a possibility that we would request a special meeting um, one week later, which would be December. I think that's December 15th. Uh, but I don't... So if you want to sort of pencil that and check on it. But frankly, I'm not even sure that we would make that date either. Um, LSA, who's the environmental consultant, they are actually going through the comments very quickly. Um, and, and so it's really hard to tell right now. I, I, it might be ready to go, but it might not be. Uh, so we can't make the call until we get a little bit closer to that date. But um, we wouldn't propose to cancel the December 8th, so we will have that meeting. Uh, it appears that there might be a few smaller projects, um, I believe maybe one town center project, but not a mixed-use project, just a single-story commercial building, um, and then a couple minor um, items for the 8th, and then possibly South Shores on the 15th. I'm not sure yet. <laughs> Would we have a 22nd no, and I would propose that we would um, cancel that meeting. <laughs> yes. <laughs> How nice of you. <laughs> <laughs> we move on to um, any other staff reports? Okay. Nothing? Okay. We move on to uh, Commissioner Comment. Okay. Commissioner Denton. Yeah, that was my comment. 
Your comment is nothing. <laughs> it's a good comment. <laughs> so that's it. We'll move on to item number J, adjournment to the next regular meeting of the Planning Commission. Well, of course, it's not necessarily the next regular meetings. Um, I'll just go through what it says. The next regular meeting of the Planning Commission held, which scheduled for, how was that sound, December 8th, 2014, beginning at 6 p.m. or soon thereafter in the council chamber located at 33282 Golden Lantern, Dana Point, California. And if there is nothing else, okay. well, I see people talking, so. Or do you yep, you had it perfect. We're good. <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay.